The SSP, or Stable Semi-Submerged Platform, was designed as a range support craft by the Naval Undersea Center. Compared to conventional monohulls, the SSP provides much less motion in waves, larger deck areas, more internal volume, and increased speed in rough seas. The SSP design will eliminate this type of motion. This is expected to be extremely valuable for many Navy applications. The center began work on the SSP concept in 1968. In 1969, over 400 model test runs were made at the San Diego Lockheed Ocean Laboratory. Work on the 190-ton SSP began in May 1970. This five-foot radio-controlled model has controllable canard fins, an aft stabilizing fin, rudders, and two electric motors. The model is simulating the 25-knot design speed of the SSP. Simulated six-foot headways produce little motion. Following waves produce more motion, but an automatic control system would greatly reduce motion. Underway, the motion is highly damped, indicating excellent dynamic characteristics. An 80-knot wind is being simulated. The monohull quickly turns broadside to the wind and rolls heavily. The SSP eventually turns broadside, but is relatively unaffected by wind. We see its reaction to extreme wave conditions when station keeping, when being towed, and when anchored under simulated 100-knot wind. Seven different bow shapes were tested in the offshore technology tank to minimize bow impacts. After extensive tank testing, the model was put into San Diego Bay to further explore its dynamic characteristics. It might make a good platform for hull-mounted sonar or a good carrier for aircraft. Tests were also conducted at the David Taylor Naval Ship Research and Development Center the design sea state of four was simulated. Over 900 test runs on struts, hulls, and strut-hull combinations were conducted at the Lockheed Ocean Laboratory in San Diego. Experimental results correlated well with theory. While work on the hydrodynamic design continued at San Diego, the Naval Undersea Center Hawaii carried out the mechanical and structural design. With the assistance of Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard personnel, drawings of the SSP were generated. Construction of the craft began at the Curtis Bay, Maryland Coast Guard Shipyard in June 1972. This is one of the six fuel cells in the lower hulls. The aluminum cross structure was welded to the steel struts using a data-clad aluminum and steel explosion-bonded strip. Here, one of the two canard control surfaces is being placed in position on the lower hull. The propulsion system employs two auxiliary diesel engines with hydraulic drive and two gas turbines driving through a four-tier chain drive, a Wilkinson controllable and reversible pitch propeller. This view of the bridge shows the controls necessary to operate the engines, variable pitch propellers, ballast tanks, fuel cells, canard control surfaces, control flaps in the aft stabilizer, and the rudders. The 89-foot SSP with a beam of 46 feet was launched in March 1973. The GE T-64 turbines provided the required 2100 horsepower. The SSP made its first run on Chesapeake Bay in October 1973 at a speed of four knots. At nine knots, it is riding slightly high as the canard control fins are set at an upward angle of attack. Wave formation is small. The craft is now operating at 11 knots, its maximum wave drag point. Wave drag reduces as the speed increases. The spray sheet becomes much larger at 21 knots 
and plumes of spray begin to form behind the struts. The SSP is now operating at its design speed of 25 knots. The ride is smooth and stable. Unlike hydrofoil boats, the main hull remains above water, even when at rest. Here the model reacts to canard deflections to induce pitch. And the full-scale SSP reacts in a like manner, although four times slower due to the difference in scale. The canard control fins are being moved hydraulically. This shows the strong dynamic control over motion which is possible. The SSP hulls can be made to partially emerge at speeds even as low as 16 knots. The model's canard controls are operated to induce a roll oscillation. The SSP rolls similarly through canard control at 11 knots. Using canards and flaps to counteract motion, full control over heave, pitch, and roll is possible. The model is being propelled on one side only with no noticeable angle of yaw. The SSP reacts the same at 11 knots with only one propeller operating. A straight course is maintained with only about 7 degrees rudder deflection. The effect of spray rails was investigated in a water tunnel at Caltech. The spray rails on the SSP exhibit a similar effect. Here the model is shown banking into a turn without the use of either canard or flap roll control. The SSP follows the same pattern as it banks naturally without roll control. Transported to the Naval Undersea Center Hawaii Laboratory in January 1975, the SSP is to be used as a range support craft for a variety of research and development programs. Shortly after arriving, the two 150 horsepower diesels, delivering speeds up to six knots, were installed as an auxiliary drive. In addition to the flat deck top side, large internal spaces are available for equipment and personnel. The primary advantage of the SSP is its much smaller motion in large waves compared to a conventional monohull. Trials were conducted during July and August 1975 off Oahu. The test data was obtained by the David Taylor Naval Ship Research and Development Center. The results were favorable and generally correlated with predictions and model tests. Even in large waves at rest or at low speeds, the SSP experiences little motion. Compare the 190-ton SSP and the 1,750-ton fleet tug. Even without the automatic motion control system, the SSP rides smoothly. If scaled to a destroyer size and automatic controls added, results indicate that such a craft could operate at full speed with little motion in sea state 6. These tests on a new expendable sonar sound source were conducted by the Naval Undersea Center off Kauai in December 1975. These were the first of several tests in which the SSP was used as a range support craft. Automatic control was added in September 1975. And in April 1976, a six-inch thick acrylic dome was placed at one bow for underwater viewing. This craft offers great promise for marine biological studies such as dolphin research, shark and fish behavior, and bioacoustics. These wild porpoises are getting a free ride by positioning their tail sections in the high-pressure region just ahead of the dome.
The SSP has also been used to lower the remote undersea work system vehicle and other devices into the ocean through its center well. The reduced motion of the SSP permits such operations as this in much higher sea states than conventional craft. For flexibility, a cover can be placed over the well and quickly convert the deck into a landing area for helicopters. The SSP can also be used for a wide variety of sonar experiments or for towing various devices. The SSP is the first of its kind, and results show it has fulfilled all expectations. The obvious advantages of the SSP may help foster a new naval era of large numbers of small, low-cost, highly effective surface craft.